Mittmaster Matt here from www.mittmaster.com with Richard who's going to help me out today and we're going to look at some fundamental punching principles on the pad. So these are known as the four R's. If Richard's in his stance, and it depends what stance you use, if you're a boxer you're going to have a slightly different stance than a kickboxer who will have a different stance than an MMA fighter. So Richard's going to select his stance. Now the first R is range, which is throwing the technique at the correct range. So if Richard's in his stance, obviously this is not the correct range for a cross. If Richard throws a cross here, he could pop his elbow up to get a bit more power, but it's not the right range for the cross. He wants to be right out here so that he can extend through the cross. So choosing the right range for the technique is essential. Once he's got good range on the technique, so he's got full extension and he's punching through the pad, you can look at rotation. Now all punches have a rotational element. Even the jab, especially the cross and the hook and the uppercut all deal with rotation. So when Rich does his cross, what I commonly find at the fault is people just throw their cross and their shoulders stay square. So when they throw their cross, their shoulders are square, which means they're not making up much rotation into their punch. And rotation gives you extra distance and it gives you extra power. So when Rich is in his stance, what I like to do is encourage my students to rotate into the cross by twisting their left shoulder all the way back. A lot of people think about the right shoulder going forward, but what I like to think about, and it helps people learn this rotational element, is the left shoulder going back, obviously the hand is kept up. So when Rich is going to do his cross, his left shoulder is going to go backwards, like that. So his right shoulder is obviously travelling forward with the cross, but then his left shoulder goes back. Left hand up, left elbow down so he doesn't get counted. So with beginners, I generally put their arm out, so put your arm out please Rich, and then I adjust them, so I move their shoulder back a little bit more, get a bit more twist on it. Notice his chin is tucked nicely into his lead shoulder, he's looking over the top of his arm. Nice straight punch, and look at how much twist he's got in it. Most people when they throw the cross, especially beginners, they're more like this. Their shoulders are square, so they're missing out on distance and power in their strokes. If they get a bit more of a twist, that's much better. So Rich is in his stance, so he gets good rotation into his cross. Then we're looking at uh, retraction, so he's going to bring his hand back. The classic mistake, obviously with beginners, is they drop their hands or they retract slowly. So when Rich throws the cross, I like to bring his pad back to his head, just to check his hand is coming back quick. If his hand goes out at 50, it wants to come back at 100, so he's creating whip into the punch, but he's not turning his shoulders anymore, so he needs to rotate, rotate. That's it, nice big twist through your body. Good. So he's getting good retraction. The common fault you find with people who throw the cross with good twist is this left hand drops down and away from the head, so they're opening themselves up. For the hook. So I also like to use the back fist. My left hand, when Rich was cross, flicks to the opposite side. Because I could do this and then bring that pad back, but that's not what I want. I want him to encourage to keep his hands up during the punch. So when he crosses, I throw that back pad, the left pad, to his left hand to make sure it's up as he punches. Twist. That's better. Make sure you get that twist. Good, elbow down, so elbow down. Try not to flare your elbow when you throw your cross, it gives away the cross is coming. And someone experienced, if they see you flare your elbow, in kickboxing they're going to counter with a nice body kick. In boxing they're going to slip it and rip to the body. So uh, keep your elbow down until the end of the punch, and it turns over at the end of the punch. So Rich is going to cross, and I'm going to check his guard. Good, and again, please twist. So he got retraction on this side with his right hand. And I'm making sure his left hand stays up with the back fist on the other side. If I just swap it around so you see it for the back fist. So when he throws across, my left hand slowly goes towards his, well, his left hand. Up like that, just to make sure it's up. And then recovery to a balanced stance. So sometimes people, when they throw across, they overcommit their body weight and step forward into it, or their footwork adjusts and it's not quite correct. So we're just going to recover to a balanced, stable stance. Nice twist, elbows down, please twist. Good. I'll just check his guard while he throws it more twist. Left shoulder back. That's bad. Okay, so those are the four R's as they apply to punching. Um, recovery tends to be more focused on kicking. So frequently beginners when they kick, so if I kick Rich's leg, their leg goes too wide out, or they fall forward into a technique, like an upward elbow, or they bring their feet back too narrow. So what we're trying to look for recovery is recovery back to the same stance you started with, whichever stance that is, so you're balanced, you're stable, you can move. So the first R is throwing the technique at the right range. And every technique has a right range, and it's different for every technique. That's not, this is not the right uh, range, for example, for an elbow. If Rich tries the elbow, he overcommits his weight and falls in, he gets counted. 
So the right range for an elbow would be, you fall a little bit to his edge, here, push. And the right range for a cross would be here. Then we're looking at rotation, good rotation. Driving the right shoulder forward by taking the left shoulder back. That's better. Keeping your elbow down. So one way to encourage your partner to keep their elbow down is to place your left hand beside their right elbow. And every time Rich's elbow pops out and flares and taps that pad, he has to do burpees. So let's say he throws it, his elbow pops out, burpees. Okay, so every time he throws out and his elbow comes out to the side a little bit too much, which is bad technique, he does burpees. Keep your elbow down, throw it nice and straight. And again, please switch. Retraction, nice and quick back. Retraction on the other side, to make sure that hands up, and then recovery to a stable stance. So that's an example of the four R's used on the cross. Let's do it on the hook as well. So we're going to do it go with a lead hook. Uh, swap side so it'll be easier for you guys to see. Which is in this stance. So, right range for the hook. Common mistakes uh, when people throw the hook is they throw it too far away and they hit the wrong, wrong part of the hand. So they kind of hit with the knuckles you'd hit on the door, which is obviously going to break your hand. You want three 90 degree angles on your hook. You want a 90 degree twist of your lead foot if you're doing boxing, not if you're doing Muay Thai. If you twist that much on a lead hook in Muay Thai, you're going to get chopped to the back of the leg because you can't shin check anymore. So for Muay Thai, there's not so much rotation on that lead foot. But we'll just kind of talk about boxing for the moment. So Rich is going to twist on his lead foot. He gets a nice 90 degree angle on that. The second 90 degree angle is between the elbow and the floor. Because if Rich's elbow is too low when he throws a hook, he hits with the small knuckles of his fingers. But also I can come over the top of that too easily. And if it's too high, his elbow pops up too high, he kind of jerks his rotator cuff and hits with the wrong part of the hand. So he wants a nice 90 degree angle on that. Some people say you should uh, hook with the thumb up. And some people say you should hook with the thumb horizontal. Experiment. See what works for you personally. So he's got a nice 90 degree angle here, and I check that by throwing the cross at the same time as the hook lands. And it, basically, I should be able to hit his elbow. He should be protected by his elbow when I throw that cross. So as he's landing the left hook, I throw a right cross at the same time, and boom, he's blocked and he's covered. Chin into the collarbone, right hand up, elbow down, and get that twist. And the third 90 degree angle is between your forearm and the chest. So you, Beginners usually hook and they either overreach it, so it's past 90, or they pull it back to themselves, which is uh, not what you want to do. You want your hook to go up, bang, hit the target, and then come back, not skim off the target. So when Rich does his hook, I want a 90 degree angle between his stop, freeze, between his forearm and his chest. So we've got three 90 degree angles. So this is how I'd like to coach the beginners. 90 degree twist on the lead foot. 90 degree angle between the elbow and the floor, so your elbow's at the right height to defend, and a 90 degree angle between the forearm and the chest, so you're hitting with the right position. So, again. so correct range, that's good range. Good rotation through that foot, through the hip, through the shoulders. Good quick retraction. So I check his hand, comes back to his head. It doesn't drop. He can hook, and I can also throw the back of foot on the other side to make sure this hand is up. And then recovery. Recovery is quite important uh, on the hook. So um, James and I, who's my training partner, saw a fight where the guy threw the hook with such poor technique and so much power that he span around in a circle. So he missed the guy and did this. And that's just terrible. <laughs> so what I like to do with the hook is when he throws it, with the three angles we're talking about, occasionally I move the pad out of the way. And with the beginner, what they usually do is kind of fall over and lose their balance, which means they're not looking at their recovery after their punch. Because you've got to assume that your punches are going to miss as much as they're going to land. So, this is a nice hard hook, and then, and then I move it out of the way, and he goes back to stance. Do not do that on straight punches. If I move the pad out of the way and across, which pings his elbow, hurts his shoulder, you're going to do those on circular punches, like hooks and uppercuts. So that's how you use the four R's on your cross and your hook. If you'd like to see more pad drills from me, go to www.mitmaster.com. Thank you.